channel my name is Sharzad and I'm going to be walking you through how to sew the perfect camisole we're going to be using a pattern from indie pattern company true bias and this is called the Ogden cami it's what I'm wearing right now it features a very elegant neckline a low back and it's a super quick and easy sew. so it's perfect for beginners that are just getting started out or even for more experienced sewists who are trying to add a very staple garment to their wardrobe Preparation. This pattern originally comes in PDF format and I've just printed it in A0 paper, but you're free to also print it on a home printer if you have one. I've traced out my size onto tracing paper and I'm just cutting it out here. This helps me preserve the original printed pattern in case I need to do any adjustments down the road. I've reused old tissue paper to cut this out and you can see that it's a relatively simple pattern with only five pieces, the front piece, the back piece, the front lining, the back lining, and the straps. Before we get started, we need to make sure we press both our main fabric and our lining fabric. Now we can lay our fabric with some weights on it and cut out our pieces. Here's what it all looks like laid out on the floor before we get started. Step 1. Stay stitch. Stay stitching is a line of stitching sewn around curved edges of a garment such as necklines and armholes in order to prevent the cloth from stretching or warping. An alternative to stay stitching when you've got a very lightweight fabric like I've got here is to use a type of interfacing um, called bias stay tape. And essentially, this is an iron-on interfacing that you put all around the curved edges instead of stay stitching, and it helps really secure the fabric. I prefer to use this on the Ogden cami only because it's a very simple top, and any kind of minor warping that might happen even with the stay stitching will still show up. So I'm going to use this iron-on interfacing along our curved edges, but you can feel free to stay stitch at 3 8 seam allowance. Step 2. Straps. Take your strap and fold it in half and press. Once the strap is pressed, we're going to sew it at a half inch. We now have our sewn straps and we're going to cut the seam allowance to an eighth of an inch. And there we have our two straps ready to go. For this next part, we're going to use an implement called a loop turner, which is pictured here. We're going to put our loop turner in to our strap and feed it all the way through till it pokes out at the end. Then we're gonna make sure that that hook part actually hooks onto the side of our strap, like so. And now sometimes this takes a little bit of finesse, but we're gonna try and feed this strap through and make it turn itself. I'm not the best at it. There we go. So you can see I've kind of got it past that point now that hook is still holding on to the first part of the strap and we're pulling it out so now we have our strap that's been turned we're going to do the same thing for the other one take your strap and lay it out flat making sure that the seam is on the side and give it a good press we're going to leave these straps to the side for now and then come back to them later step three french seams 
We're going to be finishing our raw edges using a French seam, which is a seam in which the raw edges of the cloth are completely covered by sewing them together first on the right side and then on the wrong side. Before we sew our side seams together, we want to make sure that the fabric is pinned together nicely. So here we've got our front and back pieces, wrong sides together, right sides facing out, and we're pinning them to secure them in place. The first seam will be sewn at a quarter inch. And now we're just gonna trim the side seams for the lining and the main pieces to an eighth of an inch. So now with the wrong sides facing out, we're going to fold that seam and press it really nicely to get a smooth, crisp edge. Here's our pressed seam with the wrong sides facing out. We're gonna take this seam and sew it again at a quarter inch. Now we have enclosed our raw edges using a French seam. We're going to take our lining piece now, the wrong sides facing out, and press that French seam towards the front of the lining. I've made it easy for myself to differentiate the front from the back by just marking it with a piece of tape. We've now flipped the lining over so that the right sides are facing out and we're going to neatly press that seam again as well. For our main piece, we're going to do the same process as we did for the lining, except we're pressing the French seam towards the back of the garment instead of the front. This is so that when we combine our lining and our main pieces together, that there's not too much overlap where the seams intersect. Step four, hem. We're going to turn over the bottom edge of our lining piece by a quarter inch, press that in place, and then flip it over another quarter of an inch and press that as well. With everything pressed and pinned neatly in place, we're going to edge stitch the hem. Give it a nice press and this is what the hem of your lining should look like. Step 5. Pin and stitch. Align the straps to the front of the camisole, pinning them at the top. I've also gone ahead and pinned the straps towards the bottom as well, just to hold them in place. Place the cami inside the lining and pin them in place. Stitch around the armholes, the neckline, and across the front straps. Make sure that you leave about a half inch on the back for the straps to get pulled through later. Snip little triangles all around our curved edges to make it easier to turn in the next step. Step six, turn. Here's the front of the cami now. And our straps are hanging loosely. I've taken the pins out. So we've got our loose straps just hanging right in here. What we're gonna do is very carefully making sure not to twist or turn them as we do this. 
we are going to pull our strap out and then feed it through the back under the lining and then pull them out through the back where we have left a hole for them to get pulled through. And then when we pull them through, we're gonna pin them in place and then sew them at a half inch. So this is our strap that we've got on the front side. We're just gonna pull and make sure that it is completely straight. Yep, no twisting happening here. So we're gonna very carefully make sure that this continues to not twist on itself. And we're gonna feed it in through the back lining here. We want it to come out on the back where we've given some room for it to pull through. We're going to pin it to the edge there and do the same thing on the other side. And just sew the strap to the back of the camisole and go back and forth a few times to make sure that it's secure. That our camisole has come together quite nicely. We're not done quite yet because we need to make sure that these lines are fairly crisp. You can see right now there's no pressing, there's no understitching, so it looks kind of messy right now. Step seven, understitch. Understitching is a row of stitching sewn along the edge of the lining that works to secure the lining to the seam allowance. If we have our camisole like this, what we're gonna do is pull out that lining and make sure it's flat. And we are going to press this lining away from the top and we're also going to make sure that we catch the seam allowance on the other side. So the seam allowance, seam allowance and the lining are going to be pressed away from the top. This is the garment laid out with the lining facing away from the top and we've made sure to catch the seam allowance underneath. So we're going to go ahead and give that a press as best we can. Note that we're not going to be able to get up all the way into those corners, and that's okay. Just go as far as you can and don't force it. Now we're ready to actually do the understitching. So we're making sure that the seam allowance is caught underneath the lining, and we're going to be sewing the lining to the seam allowance. Once again, you're not going to be able to sew all the way up the armhole, but just go as far as you can without pushing it. Step eight, press. Similar to our lining, we're also gonna press the hem and edge stitch in place. our tutorial sew along video for the Ogden Cami by True Bias. If you found this content helpful or valuable, please like the video and leave a comment below. Mm -hmm.